there's a variety of things. So I, I think first of all, we have to go back to writer who are very well known for teaching skills. Your students uh, speak a whole lot about you, Miss Nigeria Competition. I said, you know, let's pick them up, uh, let's take them back to Nigeria, and let's teach them a different kind of job. The world needs strong women, women who will lift and build others, who will love and be loved, women who live bravely, both tender and fierce, women of indomitable will. In the words of Ali Tenney, I welcome you to today's edition of The Woman. Now, beyond the words of Ali, I would like to bring it home a little bit and say it in the words of our elder. That is Afe Babalula, S A N. He simply says that there are women of substance, but there are women of substantial substance. This acting describes my guest for today. Who is she? Join us in minutes when I will be introducing her. Don't go away. The show is the woman, and today is an exceptional one because I have a first of first presidents, I have a woman who has begun the journey with the men and decided that she can do it better than the men. A woman who is through the path of, a, of the men and decided to give it a feminine touch as she's doing it so beautifully well. For the first time, the Nigerian Society of Engineers are lucky and blessed to have a woman at the helm of affairs. She is sitting here with me and she is someone I simply call president, but her name is Engineer. Margaret Aino Ogutela. Thank you for joining us, man. Thank you. I was describing you looking like his army. <laughs> That's yeah, you! I was, I was really. You better get used to it, Madam President. Thank you. <laughs> the journey was I mean, really tough for you. How did you circumvent? How did the men push you around? Did they rough for you? How did they go? Oh, yeah. well, they, they, they are part of the story. Okay. So, um, so I, I joined the Nigerian Society of Engineers and 1996, and um, I joined through the um, Nigerian Society of Engineers, the Kega branch. Um, even though I've been a member of the Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria. So I, okay, within three months that I joined, I started by, um, I was recognized and uh, made chairman of um, um, an organizing committee. Uh, planning committee for the 1996 um, dinner and awards night. So I that was the way I was launched into the NSC. And then I vied for the position of treasurer. I was treasurer for two years, and then ex ex official member, and then later vice chairman, and then two times. No, now I'm still in the federal branch. Mm -hmm. So I was the first female chairman to of Ikeda branch. We have, NSA has, right now, we have 86 branches. It's one in Nigeria, three in the, U, in the in the UK, one in Glasgow, one in Manchester, one in London. We have one in Houston, one in Saudi Arabia. You see, your own president is more than our own regular president. You're oh, a president yes. worldwide. Oh, yeah. Ah, I'm sure that. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that. So, so I, I, was, I became the first female chairman of uh, the Kedah branch of the Nigerian Society of Engineers in 2009. So I did that for two years, and then I moved on to the national, you know. So um, my, my my performance as chairman kind of launched me easily into the national politics. I contested in 2017 for the position of deputy president. Uh, the deputy president automatically takes over from the president at the expiration of his tenure of two years. So I lost that election. Went back, re strategized, and then came with a bigger bank in 2021. And uh, we were five contestants, three men, I mean, two men, two, three women. That was the first time we had three women contesting. So it was also history, you know, that we had so many women qualified for that position. So, and uh, to the glory of God, I won that election. And, uh, the rest, as they say, is history. So yeah, it's not I, 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 I was telling you that uh, each time I call you that, yes. I know it's your title, but somehow I feel like I'm wearing a borrowed shoe. 
and I, I wear it with pride because it's not easy for women to actually get there. And let me get back to um, but your days in the secondary school. It looks like you have always been on the front line as leadership. You were a head girl too, right? No, I wasn't head girl. I was social prefect. Okay. Yes, and um, yes, in secondary school. Okay, so I was also, I, I think it, I learned to be in the public space right from secondary school because I represented my school in debates, in quiz, science days, you know, quiz competitions, debate, and even drama. So, no way I'm going to get you there. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then in, in Form 5, in my final year, I was made social prefect. So, um, like one of my friends uh, says, it's from prefect to president. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's all peace. I give God the glory. Mm -hmm. It's all peace. And then when you were also the vice president, three times actually, something resonated with me. I, what's your ability to drag in some song and uh, get things done for your society? You want to share that experience with us? Yes, thank you. Um, you see, one of the things that we're expected to do in NSC is to collaborate with um, organizations for the benefit of members, uh, particularly the welfare of members and professional development of members. Samsung was one of the people, one of the organizations that I was able to attract into NSC to give um, members um, discounts. You know, on the show of our ID card, we got 10% discount on Samsung products, is apart from consumables. Is it still running? No, not now. Oh, I want to join your society by association. Oh, by association, I like that. <laughs> I like that. So, um, so we were able to do that. They also gave, uh, train some of our young engineers in refrigeration, you know, and and all of that. So it, it was a very good time for the NSC. And um, of course, in return, we also got they got a mention in our, on our website as our partners. And we also participated in the programs, endorsement programs, and, and stuff. So it, it was it was good. Yeah, it's a good one. Now, uh, beyond that, you did mention that um, there were three women in the contest in 2021, and it brings me to the fact that uh, women in the society of engineering, yeah, yeah, they're truly thriving. There are a whole lot of women who are going into that as of today. But before I you know, get to ask you what the um, parts, working on the part is like this day. I mean, I'd like to know, you read chemical engineering. Yes. So how did you decide to do that? Because it's quite an unusual course. And from your effort sense, you, it, for me, you cut out more like an art student. So we hear you are really a very hardcore. How did you, you know, go that? Oh, well, actually, if you ask me, I would say that, um, in the beginning, maybe in my second, third year in the university, I wasn't thinking of engineering. Hmm. So my father wanted me to become a medical doctor. I wanted to become an ambassador. Yeah, or an actor. That's the one I wanted to hear. <laughs> I, I, the ambassador part wasn't like it. Because I know you have a thing with media and the arts. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do either of the two. My father would not hear anything of it. He wanted me to become a doctor, so and then I was in the science class, so it was kind of given that I would be in science, read uh, study in science um, course. So um, somehow I just didn't uh, do well in biology. I didn't like ecology, you know. So and I also did. I also had a few um, um, coincidence or coincidences that made me not attend some of the ecology classes. So I had a P7 in biology. Mm. And my father said, uh, he wanted me to retake because of the biology, because he wanted me to become a doctor. But my principal would not help it. He mm. said, ah, ah, Margaret, okay, my middle name is Ayeni. I said, Margaret Ayeni cannot come and retake in the school. I was one of the best. So, I mean, for, I mean once, once you remove the biology, so she said she would not have it. She, it would not happen. So, so my father said, so what do you do now? I said, well, then I was wondering, I said, can I go and do study law or, <laughs> or international yeah, relations or something? Exactly. <laughs> and he, he still said no. 
So, but I have this uncle of mine, my maternal uncle, who had friends in the um, oil and gas. And then he told me, I went to his, my favorite uncle, so I went to meet him and I said, I just needed some counseling. So he said, okay, I don't to study chemical engineering, you know, that's the future. You know, so I said, yeah, really? Okay. So I, I took uh, the jam form and then, uh, because I thought, well, it was fine. I knew that I could do it. Mm -hmm. So I then I got admitted for chemical engineering and I enjoyed it. So, and then I found out really that it's a lot more interesting than what I wanted. I also found out that even being, a, being an engineer does not stop me from any other thing that I want to be. So it's just, just be present for life, but I can also do any other thing that I wish to do in my life. True. So it's, it's been a rewarding time for me. Yeah, true. So being an engineer does not really limit you. No. But being an engineer as a woman is one field that once you call engineering, a lot of us um, you know, see men in work clothes and all of that, but there are women in there too. Yeah. So how is the battle for uh, the, the few women who are there? What's, what's the struggle like? Well, the, the first thing that, that happens, like you said, when you hear engineering, you think of a man. Mm -hmm. So when you walk into a place, into an office, and you present yourself as an engineer, the first thing that comes to the mind of everyone there is, can, is she really an engineer? Can she cope? You know? And, and then it, it's, it's the struggle now comes from you proving, having to prove yourself. And it starts from even like the school, you know? You know? But, Incidentally, for me, I've had a lot of encouragement from men. The, the boys in my class, for instance, in the University of Benin were very, they were quite good. I give them kudos. They never discriminated against us. If anything, they encouraged us. So later in life, I, I found out that I, all I needed to do was just be focused on my career and prove to people that, look, engineering is for girls too. And then during my industrial attachment, because I had a total of 12 months, um, I had to work with men. So my first experience was on the, on the rig. And, uh, you know, so going to the rig, I, had, I went onshore and offshore. Mm -hmm. So the first one I was on an onshore rig. And when I got there, I had to wear the work clothes with men. But it's the same overall for whether it's a man, I mean, it's unisex. Mm -hmm. So once you wear the overall, it doesn't really matter whether you are a man or a woman. And the men were also not, they, they really did not discriminate. But you just had to also learn to deal with them because sometimes some of them would kind of pretend that you were not there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they just pretend that you're not there. And they, but, but then once they also realize that, you you have what it takes intellectually you are okay and then you know you, you know the job and you are able to apply you're ready to apply yourself to the job then they respect you is it um, beyond the gender and balancing and all of that is it that easy for a woman i feel it's really rigorous i could be wrong it's it's easy. i mean i have a bit of engineering in me i'm a domestic engineer <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear you talk about cables, oh, you know, wow. and editing, yeah. and how you're going to do this, yeah, and, I'm and I'm like, ah, right now. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so you do have more than domestic engineering mm -hmm. in you. So it's it's um it's not so difficult. You know, engineering is more of an intellectual thing than physical. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a lot of physical to it, but it's that's not it. The real thing in engineering is intellectual. Okay, so, and, the, and then the physical aspect when you have to go to sites and stuff like, I've had to climb scaffolding, you know, in the refinery to <laughs> climb columns and all of that. So that could be difficult for a woman who is not prepared. But for somebody who wants to become an engineer, it's, it's nothing. You know, and then when you wear the work clothes, really, then it becomes easy for you. you I wouldn't go to, this, to sites dressed the way I am now. If I had to go to sites, I knew I would dress properly, you know, for the job that I have to do. So it's it's not so difficult. I want to believe at this stage, you're not just doing the job, you're doing more of mentoring. Can we share a bit of that? There's a point you get to, you're thinking about the younger ones and their footprints as you go. Yes. 
I love to talk about the younger ones because they are the future. And like I always say when I'm with them, the future is now. When I was campaigning, one of the things that I did was to um, concentrate on the young engineers um, by organizing training for them. Because I do believe that every engineer has to continually train himself, training, retraining, reskilling, upskilling, because you have to keep abreast of the emerging trains and technology. And to do that, you have to be given the opportunity, you know, and, um, and space for training. So I did a lot of, I organized a lot of training for young engineers in different aspects, software and all of that. And, um, and I told them that I would be doing a lot more if I was voted in. And they did, they gave me a lot of support. So the first, I'm, I'm so glad that the first strategy partner that we got, that we that we've been able to attract now, is the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board. Mm. And uh, with their support, with the partnership, we're going to, to plan to train at least 6,000 young engineers wow. in various fields. Uh, we're starting, we, we launched the, the training last week during the World Engineering Day uh, with um, cyber security and um, ethical hacking. So we're going to be training them on even entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial skills, you know, and, and all of that, you know, um, solar, PV, renewable energy, waste management, and all of that, so that we we'll prepare them to be entrepreneurs, to be um, to be better in whatever they do. I know your tenure is pretty young, but it's never too young for you to you know lift your hands and do something quite great. You already started beautifully well. What more do we expect? Um, so now we are also seeking partners like Samsung, where we can offer um, services in, in the area of welfare. Because as far as professional development is concerned, we have it on track. So uh, we are looking for partners now to also deliver on the welfare um, side of our vision and the objectives of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Um, I had a meeting with some members of uh, staff of Lafarge last week. We have also visited them and we are hoping to also partner with them in some other areas. Uh, we were with the, um, the president, the first female actually of uh, Transcorp Corporation. Mm. Yes, um, earlier this year, and um, what I saw to her was Jeff, this Jeff Club. So I'd like to bring it back. A Jeff Club, yes. Yes, it's something that I'm really working. It actually helped to endure a whole lot. Uh huh. Right then. Yes, it will help a lot of a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of young people. I'm I'm looking at how we can bring that back to life. That's good. You know, and have NAC get through our partners, sponsor it, you know, have that TV show again. I used to look forward to the Jets Club, you know, and all of that. So, so many other things that we are. So I hope my engineers in NT will also benefit from this. They will. Okay. They will, <laughs> definitely. We have, we have quite, quite a number, okay. and they are doing well. All right, so that's a good one. I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. Now, beyond you being an engineer, one of the things you've done so well is your ability to manage your, your public space, and your private space. I'm wondering, what's this mildest touch you have? Everything you touch, you seem to do it so beautifully well, even the home front. Thank you. The, the home um, is very important. And uh, incidentally, men also look out for women who have um, solid backgrounds for positions such as this. During my campaign in particular, I met a lot of men who said, look, I'm going to vote for you because I know that you also have your home together. Mm -hmm. So that's the Nigerian or cultural factor at play. So uh, for that, to be able to do that, it's, I've just been, um, I think it's a lot of focus, prioritizing, and then realizing really what is most important to you at every point in time. I have three children, and when they were young, um, I, was, I spent a lot more time with them than with my career or NAC for that matter. So I had a job, I started with a job that allowed me time. A job that was flexible. I was sales manager. 
and I could work. Even at that, at that time, there was nothing like working from home. But I didn't need to, need to leave home at 6 a.m. like my my mates in Lagos. Um, I could leave home. I could birth my baby, feed my baby. At that time, I had only one baby, and I could do all of that before leaving home. So I I from that from that job, I took another that was just like that, just marketing manager later of industrial chemicals. So all I had to do was deal with clients, the industries around uh, Lagos, you know, to get to to market the products, also to also offer services such as feasibility studies for startups and stuff. And um, so by the time I had the second and then the started school, I was very involved in the in the school activities. As a matter of fact, for the in the school of my my last one, I was PTA chairman <laughs> <laughs> for years. I was PTA chairman, so I so I the leadership thing. Even in the child school, you went there to go and collect position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it just comes. I, I think sometimes these things just come to you naturally, <laughs> and you know, just find yourself doing them. So, um, so I spent a lot of time with them, and for my husband. He worked with NNBC, so a lot of times he was also away from home, mm -hmm. so I had to be there. So I had to hold forth at home while he was away, while he was abroad and stuff, and I learned to do a lot of things by myself. So uh, I'm like, and then because the fact that I'm an engineer also helped at all at that time because I could um, do so many things that many many other women would not mm -hmm. be able to do. No excuses. I appreciated all of that. Oh yes, yes. it does. Mm -hmm. And so it's so it's giving me the support now. Oh, all right. Okay, it's giving me full support. Oh, full support. I wanted to thank you. Look at the camera and thank you. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Manti. That's oh, what I call okay, you, Manti. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> and that's a good one. Yes. Now I, I I won't leave you because there's a whole lot of that. If anybody looking at you will see that you have this uh, very positive, lively effervescence around you and you know, spill it to other people. I enjoy it, uh, but I know that um, when that comes with food relaxation, and I know somebody told me, you like traveling, you like acting. Yes. <laughs> have you tried acting? Yes, I have. Okay, which movie? I'm not a movie. Uh, so, a soap opera? Yeah, the um, Wally Adenuga. Wow, I can't wait. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, it's old now. 2000, between 2003 and 2007. I got to meet Wally guy in 2002. And um, so I just, I told the person who introduced through whom I met him that I'd like to meet him. And he organized the meeting. So I walked up to him and I told him that I wanted to act. So he told me that there was, well, there's no money in TV series or soap as they call it. I told him I wasn't looking for the money. You just wanted to I just wanted to ask. It was one of the things that, one of the dreams that I had, one of, the, one of those things that I wanted actualized in my life. So he, so he gave me the opportunity. I went for audition and uh, I passed the audition. He gave me parts. And imagine. for three years, 2003 to 2007, four years. What was the name of the movie? Many of them. Uh, Super Story, This Life, Odd World. Hmm. Okay. All of them. All right. Peter okay. so and Company. Where all the value are doing that series. Thank you so much for coming in. But I won't tell my leave until I've had one or two words of advice to a living. Now, I need you to look into the camera. Okay. Because you're a lot of women who are looking for opportunities. Yes. Yeah. 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 At this moment, they need you to cheer them up. Can you look into the camera and talk to them? Well, uh, yes. First, let me say Happy International Women's Day because it's still on. This is our month, as I always say. Um, it's the, the life is not easy, and believe me, it's not only for women. But as women, we just need to remain focused. And um, fortunately for us, we have we are blessed by God because we can multitask. We are multi talented. The average woman is all of that. So, all you need to do is discover yourself, know who you are, what works best for you, and uh, keep focused on your goal. So, have it set I and mean, set a clear goal for yourself right from the beginning. 
and go for it. Keep your eyes on the ball, do not be distracted, and when you fall, pick yourself up. It's not the end of the world. Never be ashamed to be a woman. Definitely. Cry if you must. <laughs> Shed the tears if you must. But remain focused Definitely. and strong. Give me my next word. I keep saying I'll still come back as a woman. Thank you for coming. Me back. too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I know that more is an offering for not just women, but men as well. Because there is no woman without a man. That's why we no. are women. So, we've been talking with the president, yes, the world is president, proudly so, president, the very first female president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers in the person of engineer Margaret Anno Oguntala. Wonderful. I don't need to add in anything. Just see us again next week, and I can assure you, it will be another bumper harvest in the female industry. Bye.